Good day, everyone. Welcome to lesson three of the teaching profession. Last meeting, we talked about the historical development of teaching as a profession in the Philippines. Now, as a review, what are the basic laws in professionalizing teaching in the Philippines? Very good! The basic laws are the Presidential Decree Number 1006, known as Providing for the Professionalization of Teachers, Regulating Their Practice in the Philippines, and for Other Purposes. And Republic Act Number 7836, known as Philippine Teachers Professionalization Act of 1994. That is an act to strengthen the regulation and supervision of the practice of teaching in the Philippines and prescribing a licensure examination for teachers and for other purposes. This time, our talking point is about teaching as a vocation and mission. After this lesson, you will be able to explain teaching as a vocation and mission. Let's start with teaching as a vocation. Vocation comes from the Latin word vocare, which means to call. Based on the etymology of the word, vocation therefore means a call. If there is a call, there must be a caller and someone who is called. There must also be a response. For Christians, the caller is God himself. For our brother and sister Muslims, Allah, believers in the Supreme Being will look at this voiceless call to have a vertical dimension. For non-believers, the call is also experienced but this may be viewed solely along a horizontal dimension. It is like a man calling another man, never a superior being calling man. Most often, when people use the word vocation, they refer to a religious vocation. Vocation includes other big callings like marriage and single blessedness. It does not only refer to a religious vocation. It can also refer to a call to do something like to teach or to heal the sick. Whatever is our calling or station in life, the call is always to serve. The Christians among you realize that the Bible is full of stories of men and women who were called by God to do something not for themselves but for others. We know of Abraham, the first one called by God to become the father of a great nation the nation of God's chosen people. We recall Moses who was called while in Egypt to lead God's chosen people out of Egypt in order to free them from slavery. In the New Testament, we know of Mary who was also called by God to become the mother of the Savior, Jesus Christ. In Islam, we are familiar with Muhammad, the last of the prophets to be called by Allah to spread the teachings of Allah. All of them responded positively to God's call. Buddha must have also heard the call to abandon his royal life in order to seek the answer to the problem on suffering. From the eyes of those who believe, it was God who called you to teach. Just as God called Abraham, Moses, and Mary of the Bible. Among so many, you were called to teach. Like you, these biblical figures did not also understand the events surrounding their call. But in their great faith, they answered yes. Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done to me according to your word. Of course, it is difficult explaining your call to teach as God's call for one who is in the first place denies God's existence, for this is a matter of faith. The fact that you are in the College of Teacher Education signifies that you said yes to the call to teach. 
Perhaps you never dreamt to become a teacher. But here you are, now preparing to become one. Teaching must be your vocation, your calling. May this yes response remain a yes and become even firmer through the years. Second is teaching as a mission. Teaching is also a mission. The word mission comes from the Latin word mission, which means to send. The Webster's New Collegiate Dictionary defines mission as task assigned. You are sent to accomplish an assigned task. The phrase a mission accomplished suggests that you are sent to do an assigned task, a mission, and so if you faithfully accomplish the assigned task, you proclaim mission accomplished. Example with your parents. One of their mission or assigned task is to send you to school and when you graduate, they will say, mission accomplished. You responded to the call to be a teacher. And so, your mission in the world is to teach. The task entrusted to you in this world is to teach. These are how vocation and mission are related. You were called for a purpose. To accomplish a mission while on earth, which is to teach. If it is your assigned task, then naturally, you've got to prepare yourself for it. From now on, you cannot take your studies for granted. Your four years of pre-service preparation will equip you with the knowledge, skills, and attitude to become an effective teacher. However, never commit the mistake of culminating your mission preparation at the end of the four-year service education. You have embarked in a mission that calls for a continuing professional development. As the saying goes, once a teacher, forever a student. Flowing from your uniqueness, you are expected to contribute to the betterment of this world in your own unique way. Your unique and most significant contribution to the humanization of life on earth is in the field for which you are prepared. Teaching. What exactly is a mission to teach? Is it merely to teach the child the fundamental skills or the basic four R's of reading, writing, arithmetic, and right conduct? Is it to help the child master the basic skills so he or she can continue acquiring higher level skills in order to become a productive member of society? Is it to deposit facts and other information into the empty minds of students to be withdrawn during quizzes and tests? Or is it to midwife the birth of ideas latent in the minds of students? Is it to facilitate the maximum development of his or her potential not only for himself or herself but also for others? In the words of Alfred North Whitehead, is it to help the child become the man of culture and expertise? Or is it to provide opportunities for the child's growth and remove hampering influences, as Bertrand Russell put it? To teach class is to do all of this and more. To teach is to influence every child interested in your care to become better and happier because life becomes more meaningful. To teach is to help the child become more human. Teaching is indeed your mission. If you are doing it not only for the pay but also for service. If you keep on teaching out of love, it's a mission. If you are committed to teaching even if it means letting go of other activities. If you remain teaching even though nobody recognizes your efforts. If it makes you get excited. If your concern is success plus faithfulness, it's a mission.
This time, let's go deeper to teaching and a life of meaning. Want to give your life a meaning? Want to live a purpose-driven life? Spend it passionately in teaching, the most noble profession. Consider what Dr. Josette T. Bio, the first Asian teacher who won the Intel Excellence in Teaching Award in an international competition, said in a speech delivered before a selected group of teachers, superintendents, deputy officials, and consultants. Let's watch this video. I wrote there, teaching is not a lucrative profession. It cannot guarantee financial security. It even means investing a lot of your time, money, and resources. Sometimes it means heartaches, disappointments, and pains. But opening the minds of children and touching their hearts give me joy and contentment which money could not buy. These are the moments I teach for. And these are the moments I live for. I also wrote this book to reach as many people beyond time and space with this message. Being a teacher is such a noble profession, and being a Filipino is something to be proud of. There may be times when you will feel like giving up. Many leave teaching after three or five years for varied reasons. Remember, you responded to the call to teach, and that you have accepted the mission to teach. May you found faithful to your vocation and mission till the end. Now we have the Puedena mentality, the enemy of excellent mission, preparation, and accomplishment. For a professional teacher who looks at teaching as his or her mission, he or she will do everything to arm himself or herself for an excellent accomplishment of that mission. The striving for excellent accomplishment sometimes brings us to our Puedena mentality, which is inimical to excellence. This mentality is expressed in other ways like talagang ganyan yan, or wala na tayong magawa, or di na yan mahahalata, or di ko na yan sagot. And, dagdag trabaho or gastos lang yan. All of these are indicators of defeatism and resignation to mediocrity. If we stick to this complacent mentality, excellent mission accomplishment eludes us. In the world of work, whether here or abroad, only the best and the brightest make it. At this time, you have must heard that with the rigid selection of teacher applicants done by DepEd, only a few make it. The mortality rate in the licensure examination for teachers for these past years is a glaring evidence that excellence is very much wanting of our teacher education graduates. Class, if we remain true to our calling and mission as professional teacher, we have no choice but to take the endless and the less traveled road to excellence. Again, vocation is a calling while mission is an assigned task. Class, I hope you'll figure out if teaching for you is a vocation or a mission. Thank you for listening. Have a great day, future teachers, the molder of the next generation. Bye!